Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another review. Uh, this was a request by Jonathan Lindsay, which I'm doing because he sent me a couple stuff. And actually, I did not have this film. I do want to pick up one day now after watching it. I saw it once a long, 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 long time ago. Decades ago. But it was on Daily Motion for free. Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. God damn, man. This was a creepy-ass movie. Uh, I loved it. I, I admit I loved it. <clears throat> it might not be the typical kind of movie I would watch. But to me, it was done so well. That what is done that well, you just... It's a film where it has a creepy fucking score. I love the music, the score to this film. Really creepy. The pacing work, it, it's only an hour and 22 minutes with the credits. Not that long of a film. And it's creepy, but to be honest, I don't want to say it's tame, but it's it's fine enough because there's been so many fucking films that have tried to go so far, like a Serbian film, which I fucking hate that movie, Martyrs, which I hate that fucking movie, what I heard about August Underground from Mike, OCP, sounds like a piece of shit, that, like, this movie... This movie's fine. I guess that's the best way to put it compared to those. Compared to... Oh, I forget what the fuck the other one was called where... The one woman is chasing the pregnant lady and trying to stab her with scissors. I forgot what the fuck that was called. Wasn't a fan of that movie either. <clears throat> but this one... It was, an, it was a... It was done in 16mm, which had that gritty, realistic... Texas Chainsaw Master, the original Chainsaw Master vibe to it. And that's kind of how I view it. Like the original Chainsaw Massacre, that vibe. And Michael Rooker should have gotten some awards for this movie. He easily should have gotten some awards. Because he was phenomenal. Excellent. Scary as fuck in this movie and not over the top not quite the opposite he was chilling in his role as Henry the movie also has Tom Tolles which I think he passed away sadly as a buddy of his named Otis and John Menauden I haven't seen too many other films he's done I know at one point they wanted him to do a prequel to Nightmare on Elm Street with Robert England, which, if it was done like this, <laughs> that'd be nice. But And I'm going to say the year is 1986. Technically, it came out in 1990 because for years the MPA would not give it an R rating, and then it was fighting it for years, and finally it was released and limited. But most places technically say it's a 1986 film. So I'll just put it as that for the sake of argument. And you know what? Honestly, this film would be an R today. Compared to the shit that comes out, this would, this would be an R rating today. It would. Because there's violence, but it's nothing that honestly... You've seen worse stuff in Friday the 13th films. Because the violence you get is like a TV on a guy's head and some blood comes down. A uh, stab in the eyeball. Get in the head, put it in a sack. And some really creepy looking shots of aftermath. A lot of it's aftermath. 
of dead bodies. And that seemed like the first 15 minutes, I'm like, man, this is fucking creepy. Because the score is fantastic. And then you see Michael Worker going about his business and, you know, being nice to a waitress leaves. But then other places, it is aftermath, dead bodies. Like two dead people in a bar. There's a dead woman in a ditch. This is one really creepy image where a, a woman's dead in the bathroom and she has a fucking glass bottle in her face. And then in the soundtrack, this creepy music mixed in with like screams and we're hearing what had happened. Not seeing it. We hear bits of what happened and the aftermath. I'm like, man, that's an interesting way of doing it. And it guy did it well. And it's like telling the story of his rampage and his dealings with not really much of any dialogue. And it's like, what's going to happen next? Like one time he, he follows this woman, but doesn't go after her because her husband is home. So he leaves. Like I said, Tom Tolls is his buddy. And they were in prison together. Tom Toll's sister has come into town and is going to stay with them. And Henry, like, he's, he's, I don't know if easygoing is the right word, but in a way it is, but he's very cool, but yet you just feel the vibe that he's simmering. And I'm like, yeah, that, that's a fucking crazy guy. I mean, even to the point where Otis, Tom Toll's character, tells his sister, now don't tell him I told you this, but yeah, he was in prison for killing his mom. And so she, he leaves and she's with Michael Rooker and she tells about her past, that her father touched her and raped her. And then says, you know, did you kill your mama? And just Michael Rooker's performance, I guess I did. I stabbed her. Oh, well, he said that you hit her with a baseball bat. Yeah. And you realize his story keeps changing. You know how in the Dark Knight, the Joker kept changing his story about how he got the scars on his face? I wonder, and this is a fucking pie in the sky thought. This reminded me that I'm like, did someone see this movie and get that for, for the Joker? That, you know, the story keeps. Probably not. I mean, I'm sure there's hundreds of movies that did. But I don't know. I just. That was the first thought I thought of. The first thought that came to my head. I'm thinking, yeah, his story does keep changing. Because told the guy, did with a baseball bat, shot her. That's what he's. He says, stab her. Then later on, says, he shot her. And then you're wondering, did he kill his mom? <laughs> did he, in fact, kill his mom? Did he not? He obviously doesn't remember well. And doesn't seem like he's trying to lie about it. It seems like he really believes it. And then it just how crazy this guy is where one minute he's Otis is trying to fill up his own sister and Mark Worker just grabs him. Don't do that, Otis. It's your sister. Now tell her you're sorry. Now tell her you'll never do it again. Now he's defending the woman, but then I'll get to that in a minute. And like the, the he brings Otis into his killing spree. And Michael Rooker explains it with, look at the world, Otis. It's either you or them. I can't do it justice. <laughs> and then this home invasion. Or before that, the, the TV set. They need a new TV set. And the guy, he's fucked with them and acting like an asshole. So then they take this thing, I forget what the hell it was, and like start stabbing the guy. 
and then picks the TV, slams it on the guy's head, and they steal this video camera and TV that he had. And again, this would mean that it does hold back in the right ways because you see them approaching a house and then it cuts to the footage they filmed of this invasion where they're ripping this woman's clothes and they're kicking this guy who's tied down and then the son comes in and worker drops the cameras having him down snaps his neck and it was I think sometimes you need the right balance. Like a Serbian film Martyrs, they pissed me off because I thought they were stupid plots, boring plots, didn't give a shit about the acting, didn't give a shit about the actors, the performances, the story, and then they try to go so far for shock value that I get desensitized. You get desensitized. Like a Serbian film, oh yeah, you know, he's fucking his kid in the ass and it's bleeding. You know, and before that, he cut this woman's head off, or someone's cut the woman's head off while he's fucking her. And then, oh yeah, baby porn, newborn porn. Like, it's you just get, it's just like this is just fucking crap. Did desensitize the crap? It's like fucking Jerry Springer show. Yeah, but here you don't. To me, you don't, and it remains more creepy and less stupid. Like, this is how you do it well. And the creepiest part is when Tom Toll starts rewinding it, the tape, and Buck Worker goes, what are you doing? I want to see it again. That's the, the creepiest part of that scene. I want to see it again. Then we're only at least another, and Tom Toll starts raping his sister, and Henry beats the fuck up of the guy. And she stabs her brother in the eye, and Henry stabs Otis. You know, in a way, Henry's doing the right thing. This guy was raping his own sister, and he stopped the guy. And come up, dump his body in a suitcase. <coughs> and then you're thinking... Okay, maybe he's reformed. And it's like, no, he's not reformed. Because <laughs> they're driving. She goes, I love you, Henry. It's like, I guess I love you too. And then they go to a motel and they leave. And it's the way it was done was bone chilling. Where he takes that fucking suitcase out of the car and leaves it on the side of the road and leaves in his car. And the camera lingers on the bag and it's her bag with blood in it and we just saw what was done to someone in a suitcase so here's this woman who has a daughter at home She'll never know her mom again this lady was nice and he liked her and saved her from rape but then you're like well wait a minute why did he kill her and then someone brought up a really, it's, it's an old, old, old story, which fits it perfectly. The scorpion and the frog story. If you know this story, you know where I'm going with it. If you don't, this is the story. <coughs> you have a scorpion and a frog. They need to go over this river in order to make it to safety. Scorpion wants to get on the frog. And the frog goes, you sure? You're not going to sting me, are you? And the scorpion goes, no. If I sting you, we'll drown. I'll drown. And the frog goes, okay. So the scorpion gets on the frog's back, and they're going across to the other side. And at one point, the scorpion stings the frog. Start going down. And the frog is like, why? Why did you do that? 
And the scorpion goes, it's my nature. It's my nature. And that's why Henry did it. Even before, there's a point where she is undressing, getting ready to have sex with Brooker, and you tell he's uncomfy w with it, because whatever happened to him. So why did he do it, even though he liked her? It's his nature. And that's sort of the definition of a crazy person, right? A crazy person doesn't make sense. That's why they're insane. If they were sane, they would be sane. That doesn't make sense. Well, yeah, they're insane. It's not going to make sense. That's the point. But it was his nature. And just, it's a well-directed... I think it cost like $100,000. They shot in like 28 days, 16 millimeter. I like horror films today should look at films like this. Instead of fucking multiple upon multiple fucking jump steers, we're trying to shock an audience so much, like Mars or Serbian film or the fucking. I still can't remember that fucking stupid movie with the fucking. God damn it. Whatever. I'm sure someone will mention in the comments. I'll be like, yeah, that movie sucked. In my opinion. Because it ended with a fucking. The killer gets the pregnant woman and cuts the wo pregnant woman's baby out and. Lee dies, and this crazy bitch has the baby from the pregnant woman's stomach. Like, that's like, okay, shot value, uh, it's, uh, desensitized, it's not scary, it's not creepy anymore. This is like going, but it's not too over the top, which makes it even more unsettling and chilling. <clears throat> And I would say, I would even, watching this again, I would put it even above Maniac with Joe Spinell because I do like that film. It definitely has more of a gore makeup effects. But even look at violence, like Maniac is a much more bloody movie than this. This really isn't that bloody when you watch it, but Michael Rooker... Joe Spinell did a great job, but Michael Rooker, man, and, and the, the score, those two things really, and some of the direction, like the first 10, 15 minutes of it, and then the ending, just like, and I knew the ending, was like, I remember the ending, but pl having it play out, I was like, man, it's punch in the gut. I feel like, well, man, usually you're a guy that doesn't like downbeat endings, and it has to be done well, just like with everything else. It has to be done well. And in my opinion, this was done well. Like some of the John Carpenter's movies where it's the question mark ending. A lot of them are done. And The Mouth of Madness is not a happy ending, but I thought that was done kind of well. <laughs> Loving The Mouth of Madness. Here, <clears throat> give props to the director, the cast, the people who did the music. And yeah, it's really liked it. I definitely want to pick it up. I don't know if it's on Blu-ray. If so, I definitely will try to pick it up. I have to think it's on Blu-ray. If not, I'll try to pick up the DVD. But yeah, I I know there's a sequel. <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever see the sequel because I'm sure it's a piece of shit. Plus, I don't have. <laughs> I'm not paying for a piece of shit sequel. I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe if I find it for free, maybe I'll watch the sequel. But I already know it's going to be a piece of shit, because... Most of the time, stuff like that is a piece of shit. But the first one... Can't say enough good things about it. Really enjoyed it. Well, and enjoy is a weird... Enjoy is not the right way to say it. I. Because it's not a fun movie. It's. It's a good piece of filmmaking. That's what I would say. It's a good piece of filmmaking. And. I 
I want to check real quick. It's got to be on Blu-ray. Yeah, it is. 30th anniversary. Okay, then. Yeah, 30th anniversary. Huh. I definitely will give this a look. I don't. Hopefully, there's a documentary with interview with Michael Worker. Even if not, I'll pick this up sometime. Yeah, but yeah, I, hey, John and Lindsay, I thank you because I would not revisit this film without that. And you know, I, dear Trevor Trades, do it's. I think it's a pretty fucking unsettling film. And I don't say that about a lot of movies, but it's it's pretty fucking creepy. So, yeah, movies today should fucking learn about that, <laughs> how to do that right. By the way, uh, thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.